What is going on? How are you guys this week? Another Monday at Frankie's Free Range Meat. And before I start complaining and going into the bad news, let me just take a quick look around and show you guys what's going on today. So the guys have been busy packing orders. It's around 10 in the morning. They've been here since 7. We just finished the uh, first pallet, which is, I don't know, probably around 20, 25 boxes. So they got quite a bit to go. Uh, I have uh, my new guy filling the non-perishable orders. Uh, he just started that. I put uh, the meat orders that were placed Saturday and Sunday in these crates. I actually took uh, yesterday off, which is not good because I got a little more work to do today. But uh, I'm going to spend about an hour or two in the freezer doing these meat orders so my guys don't have to. I don't want to talk too much about this dehydrator nonsense because I might have to, I don't know, sue this electrician or something. It's getting ridiculous. The Chinese company said the warehouse is going to open back up later this month. I still <laughs> don't know what's going on with this. So it's just a $10,000 hunk of shit sitting there. Oh, it looks like the coolers came in. I'm guessing they came in over the weekend or today, but we got one company that delivers uh, me coolers that's way overpriced, and that's what these are wrapped in pallets. And then I got coolers from this guy in Jersey who sells them secondhand used, and I get a few dollars off each one. That's what we got in on Friday, but he only sells one size. Uh, so trying to save a little bit of money on that, but we don't have too much room up here. I gotta, I gotta get these, this stuff downstairs. The guys have been really busy cutting stuff, so they haven't had time to do that. And we gotta get these coolers organized too. So I've had this dehumidifier running, I mean, all the time, even before the flood, and it hasn't been able to get the humidity down low enough. So I bought a commercial one that was supposed to be delivered last Saturday, and it said it was delivered, but it wasn't. So uh, now I'm missing a $1,000 dehumidifier, um, and. Amazon isn't helping me and whatever so I'm gonna to try to go to a rental place and get one sooner than later but it actually looks like this is starting to go down now but this has been running all day every day since a little bit messy on Wi-Fi shielding Frankie's naturals we do have the moisturizing cream new blend back in stock and we're gonna have the hair pomade too so definitely try out the new moisturizing cream guys and we do have all of the clothing available on Wi-Fi shielding as well as some new stuff we have uh, some beanie hats uh, like skull caps, uh, not beanies, these are like skull caps. Uh, we have a different type of uh, hood for you guys. Uh, you can go on the website wifashilling.com to see what these look like. Uh, we have some bandanas back in stock and we have three different hat sizes, all black hats. So Frankie's Naturals Moisturizing Cream back in stock, completely new blend, which is basically just vitamin D, vitamin K2, and just like pure emu oil. And it, it's very, very expensive. Like. Um, that uh, K2 powder, it, it's insane. So really special product, you guys can try it out. We used to use this as the ball grease if you, you know, rub it on your private parts, increases your testosterone. And uh, the Wi-Fi shielding is three new products and one restock. So the hats are back in stock, but the skull cap, that type of hood, and the new fabric on the bandana is stuff we did not offer previously. And how does a creative genius like Frank Tefano still have a hard time running a business? Well, I just had to pay a $9,000 electric bill because what happened was, I wasn't paying it for, you know, four or five months due to the price being so high and I couldn't really afford it. So I started withholding rent from my landlord to pay the electric bill just in case. And that's what ended up happening. So Con Edison sent me a turnoff notice on the 1st of September, which I never received. Um, so I got an email on the 10th of September saying, hey, we're going to turn your power off unless you pay the bill. And I was like, shit, because... I went online the night before the 10th, paid the Con Ed bill because, you know, if they turn the power off with all this meat, I'm completely screwed. Um, so they basically held me hostage and they wanted all the, the, the five, six months of electric bill payments, which was like 7,500. And then they wanted an additional deposit of 1,500. So $9,000 electric bill, which is crazy. Again, I had a couple electricians in here telling me um, it's too high, but now, <laughs> Now I got to get my lawyer involved with Con Edison. It's just insane, guys. Um, I'm suing this electrician for fucking this shit up. I'm out, you know, at least $10,000 in damages on that dehydrator. I got to sue Con Edison to sort this electric bill nonsense out. My landlord doesn't want to fix anything in this building, which I'll, I'll show you guys some more flood damage. He doesn't want to fix the electrical panel so my bill's fine. He doesn't want to rewire anything. I have a lease. I don't want to pay for this shit. The AC, the HVAC units for the heat don't work, so maybe he's going to have to fix that in the winter. So the water was dripping down uh, through that ceiling everywhere down to here. Um, you can't see it that well, but that's like a, a hole in the ceiling over there. 
that water just flooded through. Thankfully, the damage up here wasn't that bad. Nothing really got wet. There are a few spots that were leaking. I would assume most of the damage internally in the, in the ceiling here by the roof and, and in these floors. And this was the main thing that I missed. I didn't come back here and look back here uh, when it flooded, but the whole ceiling collapsed. And, you know, you can't really see in there that well, but it's completely rusted. Um, like, and then this just fell through. All this down here, that's, that's what's in there. That's the color. It's all brown and rusted out. I don't know if that's steel or aluminum or whatever, but not good. Um, the, these holes that the landlord had patched uh, just got worse. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I was really banking on uh, getting that slaughterhouse to get out of this shithole warehouse and actually owning something so that um, I could actually put some money into it without worrying about it. But right now, I'm just hemorrhaging money every week. You know, I'm, I'm pulling money out of my savings every week just to keep this going. Hypothetically, the sales are okay, the profits are okay. I'm coming out with all these products for all my businesses. But I don't know. Uh, let me go upstairs and get, um, get these meat orders done in the fridge and then we'll take a quick look around the fridge. I wanna get out of here at like 12 or one so I can get a couple hours of sun uh, because um, it actually looks kinda nice out today. But since it is a Monday, I don't think that's practical. I should probably just stay down here and do some more work. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, I'm supposed to buy a bandsaw. So guys coming at uh, 10.30 to deliver this bandsaw and we're gonna pay him, and uh, I'll show you guys that too. Kilo. Uh, so the saw guy is running about an hour late, which is fine, and that's a bit of a mess down here today. I just feel like I got stuff all over the place, way too much going on. And what feels like even more of a mess is the freezer. So we still got five, 11, 17, eh, maybe 26, 27 orders to fill in the freezer. That shouldn't take me too long because I did all of the uh, larger orders first. Th these take a lot more time, maybe two to three times as much time than the smaller ones. So I got those out of the way. I got a lot of uh, liver and heart we still have to cut up. Nothing really new this week. Uh, we have plenty of ribeye back in stock. Uh, the strip steaks are now 12 ounces, so keep that in mind. We still have a lot of sirloin steak. I got to do a promo for this eventually. Uh, we have some pork skins, which we don't really have that often, the Iberico pork skin. So I'll list these. We got only seven, and that happens about once a month. Filet mignon steaks. Oh, this is a top secret burger blend uh, for an exciting project I have in the near future. But right now, we do have it available for $10 a pound, which you can try. I know it's a bit expensive, but it's really high quality cuts. Top secret burger blend. It's available under the ground beef section. Uh, brisket, we have two whole ones left. We ran out of the whole beef belly. Chuck steaks, you guys love these. They're very affordable, only, uh, I think, $8 a pound. Flank steak, we got some. Tri-tip steak, sirloin steak, one pound beef belly is still in stock. We got a lot of four to five pound short ribs. We have the truck roll. Ground venison is back. Kind of out of the other venison, though, I might restock some of it. Uh, this is just more chuck roll, skirt steak, plenty of hanger steak, way too much hanger steak. Got the bone and ribeyes if you guys like that. I gotta do pork inventory, but we have plenty. Uh, you guys are still plowing through those goat and lamb organs. I gotta cut more. Uh, beef fat, Wagyu, trim and suet fat, a little low on the lamb testicles. I'm trying to stock up on the beef liver and heart for the next few months. And we're running low on Pecani, so I definitely have some stuff I need to buy. Uh, same with the lamb brains. I uh, mainly have a lot of ground beef, and I keep feeling like I'm stocked up pretty well on inventory, but every time I look in here, it's like more and more empty, so I don't know. The promo this week is going to be uh, one pound of, of ground bison, so. Uh, I'll probably start that Tuesday or Wednesday. So if you guys place an order this week, regardless of what you get, you're gonna get one pound of bison free with the order. Uh, so I'm gonna maybe hang out a few minutes, wait till uh, the new guy is done filling the non-perishable orders for all the other companies. And then I'll take him in the freezer with me and I wanna show him around the freezer stuff because I haven't done that yet. And that's the next step. Some of you guys might've noticed I was wearing my gray sweatshirt and now I have the white one on. <laughs> we had a bit of a water kefir explosion. Uh, for some reason, I don't know if it's the humidity or the temperature down here, it was over fermenting. I actually opened a bottle, it exploded all the way up to the ceiling. Absolutely crazy. There was so much pressure in the bottle of water kefir that it just completely emptied out. And I had them under the sink here and I was opening one earlier and it just it completely exploded under here. I had to mop the whole floor, but it wasn't as bad as it was last week when I had a huge, huge, huge mess. So instead of closing the water kefir bottles after the first ferment, I'm just going to uh, leave the bottles, like the caps loose so the air can escape. And then when I go to ship it out, I'll tighten the lid. So 
Um, I'll try to film a video maybe one day this week of the bottle exploding to show you guys how crazy it is and that you have to be very, very careful with these water kefir bottles. So I do have a warning on the website that says warning contents under pressure, but uh, this new batch has been extra volatile for some reason. So I'm debating on not selling it because of how sketchy it is and that you guys can just make your own with the grains, but we'll see. You know, because even if I do let it gas out for two or three days, if I close the cap and then it, if it sits in California shipping for three or four days, if that person goes to open it in their kitchen, it might, because if the pressure is so much, then it'll just explode when you loosen the cap. The gas won't release like it normally does. So I have to think about that. The guy just got here with the band. So unfortunately, um, his supplier sold him the wrong size blade. So as he was showing my guys how to put the blade on this, um, we realized it was too big. He's driving to Queens real quick to get uh, the right size blade. So this is a, what does it say, Butcher Boy? Uh, this is a Butcher Boy bandsaw. I paid a bit over 3000 for this because uh, it's 110 volts, single phase electric. It's not a three phase, but this is basically the strongest motor I could get um, for, for the electric I have in this building. And this is just going to be to cut the bones. And normally these machines go for like 10, 12,000 new. So I kind of lucked out on this one. And you know, those bones are delayed. They were supposed to be here within a week. They're gonna come towards the end of October. So I just wanna have this saw on hand for that. And back when we were actually looking at these two warehouses side by side, the one next to us had three phase electric, but it cost a little more. In hindsight, I would have definitely purchased that one. And uh, one of my guys is also saying that um, this vacuum machine we have right now for the meat might not be working. So hopefully not, cause I'm, I'm tired of fixing shit down here. But um, I, I think that's gonna be it for today. There's nothing to really go over. Uh, this guy is gonna get uh, the new saw blade will hook it up. I'll show you guys that running next week, even though I don't really have to use it for anything yet. Uh, we got a lot of packages for the post office to pick up. Uh, we have to do the new batch of water key for tomorrow. And just a lot of stuff that we have to catch up on from last week. You guys saw we had the styrofoam coolers earlier. So uh, if you guys do want to support the business, you can go to Um You can also go to frank defilecom to see everything else. The foods, organ supplements, Wi-Fi shielding, Frankie's Naturals, all that stuff. Um, but if you guys could drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again for joining, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow.